Hi, this is Nanette Hosenfeld with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Monday, October 17, 2016. Looking at our fire potential impacts today, the main impacts will be across the southern part of the area where we are expecting wind gusts in the 30 to 45 mile per hour range. Relative humidity and fuels are driest across this area as well. Moving into next week, we are looking at a significant warming and drying trend across most areas. Over the past 24 hours, there was quite a bit of precipitation across the northern part of the area. The map on the left shows these precipitation amounts. Unfortunately, we don't have Idaho on the map. Um, those areas were not uh, done being processed. However, the areas of largest concern do appear on the map, and you can see some very significant precipitation across portions of Utah and Nevada that occurred yesterday. There was also some lightning across portions of Nevada and Utah associated with these storms. Fire activity is surprisingly high uh, for the time of year. There was a new fire down near Cedar City uh, reported this morning, and there's still the larger ongoing fire in western Nevada. As far as observed precipitation, the map on the left shows what we've seen over the past seven days, and you can again really see those significant totals across the nor northern part of the area. If we look past, look back at the past 30 days, that's the map on the right, uh, you can see really much of the Great Basin has seen some fairly significant precipitation. The the exception to that is southern Nevada and portions of central Nevada. Current fuel conditions are, as you would expect, uh, for the most part below the 50th percentile. However, there are a few stations across southern Utah that are in that 50th to 70th percentile. The satellite this morning shows a, a low pressure system just to the north of the area that is exiting the Great Basin and we'll see some uh, lingering clouds and cooler temperatures from that system today. So again, here is the uh, 500 millibar chart from today. You can see the moisture in place across the northern part of the Great Basin. This is reflected on the fire potential map uh, with the higher fire potential across the southern part of the area. And across the south, we are highlighting the potential for high risk due to winds. This afternoon, as I mentioned, we are expecting some gusty winds across the south. You can see across southern Utah, the very southern tip of uh, Nevada, Nevada and the Arizona Strip, we are expecting some gusty winds, winds in the 30 to 40 mile an hour range this afternoon. Relative humidities will be the lowest across the south, but again, they are in that 20 to 30 uh, percent range. As we move into Tuesday, we will see another disturbance impact the Great Basin uh, with moisture again across the north. Winds will be gusty across the south on Saturday, and we will see the lowest relative humidities across the southern part of the area. Moving into Wednesday, we will see high pressure beginning to build with drier air making its way into the Great Basin. And you can see the southern part of the area again is the driest portion. Winds will be lighter on Wednesday as uh, the high pressure builds into the area and the relative humidities do remain low across the south on Wednesday. So our three-day precipitation accumulation will really focus across the northern part of the area, uh, most of Idaho, portions of northern Nevada, and the higher terrain of northern Utah. On Thursday, that high pressure will continue to remain, remain in place across the area, and that continues to be the case as we move into Friday. Uh, Saturday will also be quite warm and dry across the area, and on Sunday there is a potential for another system to begin to move in the area and bring moisture into the western part of the Great Basin. Looking at the seven-day precipitation accumulations, uh, pretty similar to our three-day precipitation accumulation, so really after this three-day period we are drying out <coughs> towards the end of the week. Finally, looking at the 8 to 14 day period, we will see below normal te temperatures across the western part of the Great Basin, above normal temperatures across the eastern part of the area, and above normal chance of precipitation in the 8 to 14 day period. So that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. The information is on the screen, and you can also find us on Twitter. Thanks.